Well, good morning, St. Mary. I am excited, actually, this Sunday. When I stepped into the sacristy, Deacon Pete accused me of being a, a, a cat with a canary in my mouth. <laughs> And, and I don't know why, but, but I am feeling that way. Or rather, I'm perhaps feeling more like uh, the, the fowler that has escaped the, the snare, if you know that line from the Psalms. More like Tweety instead of Sylvester in that, in that metaphor. Um, because I truly love this second reading from Corinthians. It, uh, it, it, there's a, a, a famous a guy named C.S. Lewis who did a, 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 a lecture called The Weight of Glory. And it's a brilliant little lecture, maybe 30 minutes or so. And in it, he points out that all of us, all of us have this inconsolable secret within us. And he, he says, I'm, he apologizes up front to his audiences, I'm going to touch that inconsolable secret in each of you. And, I, and, and he, he apologizes because it's an intimate thing. And that inconsolable secret is what we, what we would refer to as heaven, what we refer to as the kingdom of heaven and, and our glorification and that, that great beyond that we don't understand. We just don't understand it. And so we, we tend to, we tend to um, truncate it by using words like romanticism and, and uh, adolescence or poetics or beauty, right? We, 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 we tend to kind of shorten, our, when, we, when we start to think too lofty, our mind says, this is a little bit too much for us to handle, so, so we, 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 we kind of pass it off, in other words, as some sort of childish behavior. Well, if I know anything from Scripture, it's that over and over again it tells us that we should come with a childlike heart before God. We should absolutely approach Him with a childlike heart. And, and, and so I am feeling like that canary <laughs> that has escaped the mouth of the, of, the, of the cat because I know that Jesus Christ has died for me. And I am suffering under the weight of eternal glory. This, that's my favorite line out of this whole thing. The weight of, e of eternal glory. Uh, that uh, that this, this passing uh, thing that we're going through now, this is momentary. It truly is. C.S. Lewis goes on to point out in his lecture that, that everything will pass away. The earth, the sun, all of these things will pass away, but you... You as a soul, me as a soul, as a person, living and breathing right now will not pass away. We will outlive the sun. And that is crazy to think about. And we will outlive the sun in one of two places. We will, like we will be blessed, we will be, we will be either glorified by God, living under that weight of glory, or we will be one of these kind of creatures that, that nobody wants to be around, like uh, living in shame, right? These, those are our, our kind of options, are this shame or glory. And there's a very strong tendency within us to live within that shame. That's what Genesis is pointing out here, right? We, we want to blame and point others. We want to we wanna say, well, the woman made me do it, or the snake made me do it. But, but we must stop and forget. We, we must stop and, stop and remember and never forget that it is God who is doing these things first. It is God who calls out to the people first. It's, it's the first thing. He says, where are you? And from, from, from where are you in Genesis all the way through the father and the prodigal son who's running out to meet the prodigal son's return is this story of a loving and merciful father, of a loving and merciful father who is seeking out after us. It is not so much how, much how much I know about God. Like so many people tend to think, oh, it's great, father knows so much about God or deacon knows so much about God or that spiritual person, that holy person, they know so much about God. C.S. Lewis points out that's absolutely backwards. That it is what is more important is how much God knows about you. How much God knows about you. About me. And how intimately he knows me. That, that when we fall into this lie about how much we know about God, we've missed the boat. We've missed the boat. But I think, I think that secret is very true, and I think the psalm points to it. Psalm 130 is my absolute favorite psalm. I sign my emails with this psalm, Psalm 130, verse 6, 6 
I am longing for the Lord more than watchmen for, dra- for daybreak. My soul is longing for the Lord more than sentinel for daybreak. Let the watchmen count on daybreak and Israel on the Lord, because with the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. And there's always been this part of my heart that just longs for something more, something that's just, I know it, I can put my finger on it. C.S. Lewis says, he says it, it's, the, it's the secret that we cannot hide and we cannot tell. We cannot tell it because we've never, it's never ac- appeared in our experience. And we can't hide it because it just shows its evidence in every experience we have. So we can't hide it. And I love that. I love this image. He says, he says, the more we wrestle with this unknown, the more we wrestle with it, the more we cry out of the depths of our heart, as the psalm says, that, that um, the more we are in touch with God. The, the more, it isn't that God hears us more. It's that, that, that we're using our voice to cry out, and, and we don't even know. We, like, we have no idea what we're crying. I, 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 there was a, a little, I, I pray for this little young man crying over here. He's crying on his mom's lap, and it just seems he doesn't know what he wants. He's just crying. And at the same time, we have a, a young girl who's just excited to be here, who gave me her name as she comes here. Hi, I'm Chloe. She's just excited to be here. And this is what it's a child like. This is what it means to be a child here. Right? That we come out, we come and we cry out in ways we do not understand, we do not know. We cry out from the depths of our heart because with the Lord there is mercy. And, and as St. Paul points out in the second reading so very clearly, so very clearly, which I, I didn't catch until I was listening to it, it says, everything indeed is for you so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. So it's all for you. It's all for your glory. Whatever is filled glory in you that is pressed down and overflowing, that's what goes to God. But God is glorifying you. It isn't the other way around. We do nothing to give glory to God. We are, we're, we're, we're just, we're just dust. It is God who glorifies us. And through that glorification, we give glory to God. Amen?